Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where a selfish manager gets himself fired. Our next Reddit post is from Who Screwed the Pooch. I had a manager who hated reading emails and would miss important issues in meetings because of it. I even suggested that he use text-to-speech to make it less unpleasant, but he told me off. He spent a lot of time, quote, playing golf with clients and was mostly inaccessible. It got to the point where most of the team CC'd me because I was the next on the totem pole so that I could grant approvals for stuff like expense reports and help out on projects that my manager was supposed to work on. When I was getting married, I requested three weeks off from my honeymoon. Everyone knew that I was getting married. My manager even congratulated me on the engagement when it happened. I had five weeks vacation accumulated, and I didn't think that it would be a big deal, especially since I was requesting it nearly eight weeks in advance. Then, a vacation request denied email came in from our time off system. I emailed my manager to follow up, left voicemails, and after a week he finally replied to an email. Look, we need dedicated people. If you think you can take three weeks off for a vacation, you need to reconsider your position here. Keep in mind that my request stated, vacation request for honeymoon. I replied with, no consideration needed. My last day will be three weeks from now. Let me know about my transitioning duties. I forwarded this to HR CCing my manager, and HR set up my exit interview. But HR told my manager to set up transitions for my responsibilities. During my notice period, I even replied all to my email twice, asking about transition plans since I didn't get any transition plan. I tell my team, and they ask my manager what to do about my duties, and my manager says he'll think about it, but doesn't do anything, nor email anything out. Four weeks later, I get a call from my old boss. Are you planning on coming in this week? Why would I? Because you work for me? Not of last week. Stop messing around and get your butt in the office. I told you my last day when you denied my vacation request. How about giving proper notice and transitions? HR asked you to develop a transition plan and to attend my exit interview. It's not my fault that you don't read all your emails. I hung up and blocked his number. Then, I took screenshots of the call log and sent it to the HR contact with an innocent, Should I be worried that my old manager thinks that I still work for him? The fallout. Things went from bad to worse for my old manager. Apparently, I was doing most of his managerial duties, so he actually had to try to get most stuff done himself. He also got into some legal issues. All those client golf outings that I mentioned? Well, he did play golf, just not with clients. That made his termination with cause, so no severance for him. I ended up working for a competitor with a nice bump in pay. I wanted to start after my honeymoon, but my new company really wanted my help on a pitch. I joined for several weeks, reworking one third of the pitch and then went on my honeymoon for three weeks. They paid me for my entire time off. That garnered a lot of goodwill from both me and my wife. Down in the comments, we have this story from Paradigm Reset. This was decades ago. I was working at a pizza place in college and my friends were planning an extended weekend road trip during summer break. The restaurant manager would make the schedule on Sunday for a week in advance and I worked weekends. Two weeks before he made the schedule, I told him that I wasn't available on X dates. He said, okay. The week before, I told him again, and again it was, okay. And then I told him again a final time the Sunday prior, a couple of hours before he made the schedule. Lo and behold, I was scheduled to work the weekend I said that I'd be out of town. I brought this up with him, saying that I'd be out of town those days. Well, I need someone to work those days. That's nice, but you don't seem to understand. I'm not gonna be here to work. I told you this several times and you said okay. Sorry, but I need you here. Sorry, boss, but I'm simply not going to be here. In fact, I'm done being here, period. That was my last shift there. Granted, this was far from a very important event, but dude, you never said anything but okay. Our next Reddit post is from Computer. At the start of the pandemic, my manager predicted the impending logistics nightmare and that the company's JIT system might suffer from that. For clarity, JIT stands for just in time, and I'm pretty sure that a JIT system is an inventory system that's set up so that new inventory comes in just when you need it. Some of the parts used in our manufacturing will run out within several hours if the routine delivery trucks don't show up on time. 
If our plant can't run, then our other plant that requires the stuff that we make will also be forced to shut down because, guess what, they also use the just-in-time system. The department manager agreed with my manager after holding a meeting with other representatives who all told him that they were having the same problem, along with truck driver shortages and employees calling in sick. The problem was that the inventory audits would fail if you had excessive inventory, which tied my department manager's hands. Someone in another department took the initiative of ordering extra parts after they started having delivery delays. All it took was one inventory audit and they were forced to correct their inventory levels. Simultaneously, a few of my coworkers who were looking for alternative suppliers couldn't make any progress because the alternative suppliers charged a higher price for those parts. And our company just wouldn't accept that. My department manager promptly put out an email saying that until the corporate HQ changes their policy, there would be no deviation from the JIT system, no matter how many production disruptions we have. By the time upper management finally changed the JIT system, we had already lost weeks of production time, especially when one of our suppliers was hit with severe weather and was flooded. Naturally, our parts from that supplier ran out very quickly. One of my coworkers who was shut down by trying to find alternative suppliers laughed at that because if he had gone with that supplier, they only would have charged 10% more. This caused the second plant to shut down operations because we couldn't deliver them our stuff. As for me, I had a project where a vendor literally told me that they had no idea when a certain part would finally be delivered to our factory. But still, I wasn't allowed to deviate from the original project plan because of all the paperwork and approvals required to substitute parts. I had a real fun time telling upper management, we have no idea when we can finish building this system. Man, it's so weird to me that upper management refuses to listen to the people who are actually doing the work, who actually understand how things work. Like, why would you not, why would you not pay attention to that? Instead, you're just going to be prideful and let your entire factory get shut down? I just saw recently that apparently BMW sets up their, like, their management structure or something such that it's half management and half people who are literally just, like, random employees in the company. They just pull in random workers because they actually understand how BMW functions and they make decisions with the workers. And it's just, it's so weird to me that more companies don't do something like that. Instead, you have situations like this where the upper management is so high up on their high horses that they refuse to see any of the problems actually going on and then their company gets shut down. Our next Reddit post is from Draco Fay. I work at a distribution center, and unfortunately, I injured my knee while working one night. We're not sure what happened. The case is currently ongoing. In the beginning, work was pretty accommodating, until they noticed a loophole in my workers' comp doctor's note based on how it was written. The doctor's note stated that they had to give me two to three 15-minute breaks to rest and ice my knee. My doctor meant this to be included on top of our regular two lunches. The operations manager and HR decided that two of those breaks were covered by one of the lunches and would only give me one additional 15-minute break. I objected, telling my boss that he knew very well what the doctor intended, but he didn't budge. Fine. I go back to the doctor and mention what happened. Naturally, the doctor was annoyed, so he wrote me a new note stating to give me a 15-minute break every two hours. Easy, right? Nope. The operations manager and HR consolidated my lunches for the breaks because of how it was written. Once again, I go back to the doctor. Now he's pissed and he includes the line, in addition to regular lunches, on the note because they're so focused on how the note is written. The operations manager is furious when I show him the note and he said that he refuses to pay me for those breaks, which I'm pretty sure is illegal. I submit a letter of concern to the safety supervisor, along with a statement that I'm planning on bringing this matter to a higher power. As in, a lawyer. Then I spoke with the head of HR. Like magic, my operations manager presented me with a reasonable break schedule, and he had me assigned to a department where I'd be stationary, which is a side bonus. Not everybody's a pushover who won't fight back. Our next Reddit post is from Frostbite. When I was in college, I worked for a mobile carrier in a mall. For a young person, this was great money. I was the assistant manager, which was a fancy way of saying that I was in charge of most of the store paperwork. So, going back a few months. 
One morning I opened by myself and a guy approached me asking for a specific phone and kept balking at the price, asking if I could cut him a deal. I was confident that we were by far the cheapest in the area, so I told him, if you bring me a better deal, I'll beat it. The guy does another lap, talks to the other stores, and comes back. Come on, there's nothing you can do? Can I just get a free case or something? I smile and say, sorry, that's the best that I can do today, but can I get your number in case we get a sale that brings the price down? Sometimes, this approach actually worked. His entire demeanor changed, and he handed me paperwork out of his bag and showed me his ID. He was from Corporate Loss Prevention. Apparently, my store ranked top in the state for excessive discounts and excessive waste. He then handed me a document showing me all of my friends and family discounts. So, I flip open my phone, and I show him that all the names on the list are in my phone. Thus, they are friends and family. He thanks me, and then he says that he'll stick around to talk to my boss and one other team member. Since smartphones aren't really a big thing at this point, the loss prevention guy starts talking to me about my job, and I ask him a little more about what exactly flagged our store. Turns out, the other two people he wanted to talk to had more than 30% of their transactions marked with that discount code, and our store seemed to lose lots of inventory. The store practice was that if you open an accessory and it was damaged in shipping, you just throw it away and grab another one. It turns out there's a process you need to follow. He showed me the form and he said, you really should be between such and such a month to be considered average. He then interviewed my boss and coworker who couldn't prove that their discounts were accurate and they were let off with a stern warning. From then on, I took on the responsibility of tracking inventory and warning the team when we were getting close to the monthly limit. Like a miracle, cases stopped breaking for the rest of the month after I made these announcements. Fast forward. I open by myself again one morning. An older gentleman approaches me and starts screaming at me about being a heartless bastard and asking, how the hell can you do this to people? I looked at him, puzzled. Sir, I have no idea who you are, so you can't possibly be mad at me specifically. Let's go sit over there and have a quick chat. As soon as we sit down, I look at him and he starts crying and shaking. I don't know what to do. I'm going to lose my house. He goes on to tell me that his son had gotten 10 free phones from my store and the monthly bill was roughly $800 plus tax. I said, sir, if your son started an account with us, there's nothing I can do without him coming to the store. The dad shows me a photo in his wallet and explains that his son lives in a home because he's too old to take care of him. He's visibly disabled. He was already barely getting by paying for his own house plus his son's care. My heart dropped when I figured out what had happened. My coworker had sold the phones to his son while they were on a mall outing with his group home. Furious, I go back to the store and void the entire order. I instruct the dad to bring me back every phone that he can find. Anything not in the store that day would be marked as stolen. I write up the inventory report and I mark all the phones stolen for the time being. My coworker comes in and I say to them, don't bother clocking in. I saw your order from last night. I just want you to know that I voided it. If you pull anything like that again, I'll make sure that you're fired. Take the rest of the weekend off. He argued with me for a moment, but then left. 25 minutes later, my boss shows up saying that he heard what happened. I show him all the paperwork and I explain what I did to solve it. Irritated, he looks at me and says something like, You know you can't do that, right? He then argues with me that I had no right to void the order and that a contract is a contract. Confused and angry, I say, look, I will not sit by and allow people to be taken advantage of like that. To which he replies, if you don't like the way we do things here, you can leave. Shocked, I walk back into the store where he tells me that he's taking care of all my paperwork to fix my mess. I quietly rip up my inventory report with a smile and I tell him that I'm leaving for the day. I call up a friend who said, why don't you just get an IT job, which is what I was going to school for. He then calls a recruiter and sets up an interview for the next morning. My boss's little push gave me the drive to just go for it. I nailed the interview and I got the job. My now ex-boss texted me shortly after and said, hey OP, you're late, to which I responded, nah, I don't like the way that you do things there. Silence. Fast forward a few months. Both the boss and the co-worker were fired for theft. 
You see, with all those unexplained missing phones and with no one watching inventory, loss prevention quickly took interest in the store again. It turns out, the broken cases were actually team members giving away inventory to close sales. So, when I was there balancing inventory and giving warnings, it was letting them know just how much they could steal and get away with it. Without me there, they just did whatever the heck they wanted. From what I heard, they were escorted out by security. So, in the end, I was pushed to start the career of my dreams, and they have a record. Okay, so every time I do an ExpressVPN sponsorship, I have to spend time figuring out which part of ExpressVPN I want to talk about. Most things you buy have only like one or two functions, but VPN services have like five. So this time, instead of talking about just one function, I'm going to talk about all of them. First, ExpressVPN protects you against hackers. Do you ever use public Wi-Fi? Then you might be exposing yourself to hackers, unless you're on a VPN, in which case you're protected. Two, ExpressVPN protects your privacy. You know when it's late night, everyone's asleep, you unzip your pants and search up some anime? Well, your internet service provider can see that search. Wouldn't you prefer it if other people can't see your messed up late night internet searches? ExpressVPN also unlocks streaming content. Depending on where you live, some content won't be available on your streaming platform even though you pay for it. Do you live in the US and want to watch some Miyazaki? Tough luck. But if you're behind a VPN, you can just change your location and watch it anyway. ExpressVPN also lets you play video games that you can't normally play. Me? I'm a big fan of action RPGs, so I'm hyped to play Lost Ark. Problem is, Lost Ark has been available in Russia and parts of Asia, but not in the US. With a VPN, I could just change my location to Korea and play it anyway. So, if you're interested, you can go to expressvpn.com slash r slash to get three months free of ExpressVPN. That was r slash malicious compliance, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.